So please, at this point, uh, help me welcome to the stage Chief Film Critic of the New York Times, A.O. Scott. So Tony, I'm Thank just you. going to kick it off with a question to you. So you had the unenviable but very difficult task of selecting five different films. How did you do that? Um, I, with great pleasure and with great difficulty also, because uh, Manola Dargis and I, Manola, who, who is a native New Yorker, she lives in Los Angeles now, but, but she grew up in the East Village, um, steeped in New York movie-going culture. Um, and, and we sat down to brainstorm a, a short list, and the short list was two or three hundred movies um, <laughs> easily. And so we thought, well, what, what do we do now? And, and we knew going into it that no matter what we did, New Yorkers and, and film fans um, being who they are, um, people would, would give us a lot of flack about it. The, the first <laughs> question anyone would ask when they saw the first five was, well, what about this one? How come you left this one off? How did you forget this one? So knowing that that was going to happen anyway, we kind of put our heads down and we thought, well, what are, what are five movies that represent a range of different kinds of stories, a range of the, of the many different people um, and kinds of people who make up New York City, a range of genres, a range of styles that also can be shown um, in public parks to anyone who wants to come see them. So that, that made it a little easier because it ruled out some of the harder edged, you know, um, grittier, uh, tougher, more swear word laden. Um, I mean, every New Yorker's favorite word, you know, we have to kind of leave that one out. Um, and we came up with this, with this five that we felt like represented, um, you know, not necessarily the only five movies that anyone should ever see about New York City, God forbid, but five that everyone should see and that um, people would be able, to, be able to explore and to get behind and to right. discover. And I should say that one of the reasons we were really excited to do this program, other than the reasons I mentioned, is because of access and inclusion. The idea that we know it can be expensive to go to the movies, and this really is providing free movie screenings all across New York and parks and independent movie theaters. I do want to say, um, before concluding, that the response to these five films in particular has been outstanding. And just an interesting anecdote, we actually heard um, from Gene Kelly's widow, Patricia, who was so thrilled that On the Town was included. We heard from Susan Seidelman, the director of Desperately Seeking Susan, who was also ecstatic that her movie was on that short list as well. So without further ado, it's my great pleasure to introduce the man of the hour, the director of our winning film, director Spike Lee. Let me ask first, how many uh, of you um, in, in the house tonight are seeing Crooklyn for the first time? Oh, wow. Well, you, you, you are just really in for, for a treat. Um, and uh, this is, um, there are many, many of your movies that I, that I love and that, that mean a lot to me. This one, um, I feel like, has a, a special place uh, in my heart, I saw it not long after um, moving to New York, um, to Brooklyn, and it's, it's, um, it's warmth, it's spirit, it's heart, it's sense of, of, of the city um, and, and, and its neighborhoods and, and its people is so, is so rich and wonderful. Um, but this is, this is one of many movies you've made about the city, but this is, this is also, I think, a very personal movie. Um, it, it, it kind of comes out of the experience of your, of your own family and your own childhood. And I, I wonder if you'd talk a little bit about, about that, um, about where, where this story comes well, from. Well, first I'd like to introduce my siblings who are, my, who are the co-writers of this film. In fact, they had, wrote, they had written, excuse me, they had written the script it's called Hot Peas and Butter, which is a New York City game, you know, kids game. So my sister, Jwali, stand up, please. And my little brother, Sankey Lee, right here. So they had written this script called Hot Peas and Butter. And I didn't even know they were writing it. They just said, we got something. And uh, it's about the Lee family growing up in uh, Fort Greene, the Republic of Brooklyn, the Republic, in pre-gentified 
Fort Greene. Our parents bought our brownstone for $40,000 back in 1968. Back then, realtors wouldn't even use the, the, the name Fort Greene. They would say, downtown vicinity. <laughs> so it's been neighbors very different now. And the same for Bed-Stuy, Do or Die. You know, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a fight now because people are being pushed out of their neighborhoods. And uh, you go, there, there's, there's pro and cons of gentrification. I just find it funny when I was there, the public, the, the public schools in our neighborhood were no good. The garbage never picked up. The cops never round. But now that the complexion of Fort Greene and Bed-Stuy and other neighbors have changed, all, all of a sudden, the garbage is picked up. All of a sudden, there's police presence. All of a sudden, the schools are better. So there, there's something wrong with that. Because we, we know the black Puerto Rican, all these neighbors pay, pay, pay taxes too. What well, that that process I, I think was 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 already underway in the '90s when you started making that because the movie takes place in the in the 1970s. Yeah, early 70s. Yeah. So were 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 you kind of aware of that? Were you thinking about that about that change about that process as you were no. as you were shooting the movie? We were we just wanted to to capture as best we could rem remember. Our childhood, uh, like in the film, our mother died very young. She was 40, 41 years old. She taught at St. Anne's in, in Brooklyn Heights, great school where they went. And I was, I, I'm, the, I'm the eldest of five, so I was in college. I was at Morehouse in Atlanta, Georgia, and everybody else was here in Brooklyn. And and tell me a little bit about about casting it. There's some some amazing performance. I mean, you see Delroy Lindo and and Alfred Woodard as as the parents. Um, and and the most, excuse, if I could just yes, jump into the, the, the most, I mean, if you cast Alfred Woodard, you cast Delroy. You know you're gonna get. You know what you're getting. <laughs> it was the kids. Right. I that was the yeah. most important thing, casting the kids. And uh, what was Carlton's last name? Carlton Williams. Williams? Mm -hmm. uh, the young act, the young, who was a kid then, Carlton was the one that played me. He he died. How long has he been dead? Uh, 2006. He died. Uh, hmm? he yeah, we passed away. So, I mean, uh, he's 24. So the, 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 the kids, is always, that's, that's always crucial. And uh, I tend to like actors who aren't, child actors, so we went to a lot of public schools and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Well, you have, and you have Zelda Harris as, as, the, as, as Troy. Where's Zelda now? Um, she's a teacher in Los Angeles. She plays Troy, which is based upon my sister Joie. She was the only girl, so she grew up in a household of, of brothers and caught holy hell. <laughs> And she's kind. Of, I mean, the, the 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 whole family. It is. It's certainly a a a, a group portrait. But I, but I do think that 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 Troy is sort of the 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 center of it. In yes, a way. absolutely. Uh, the other thing about this 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 movie that that people will immediately, I think, um, respond to and notice is is the music, um, which is always an important aspect of your films. But in this one, I think is is does does a particular work of kind of bringing you. Um, back into uh, into the time and the place. Music is always, I've found, to be the easiest thing to get a sense of the time period. Yeah. I mean, you look at what George Lucas did with American Graffiti. So there's many different examples of that. And uh, this is a music of uh, that we all loved growing up, Motown and all the other stuff. So uh, it was this from us two soundtracks. I mean, two CDs, so we were just, 
And back then, it didn't cost a lot of money. I mean, now it's going to cost you for James Brown's song, but wasn't that that big cost back then? So we were able to uh, really just put all the songs I loved into uh, into it. Um, and were, were you? I, I'm always interested with 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 any filmmaker, and 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 especially with you, in in the way that you kind of absorb and transform influences because this 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 movie is is a, is a you know could be no one else's movie but yours and is is so um is so original and so and so fresh but but also um in in the kind of the, the telling of the family story and and um and 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 the sense of place uh you know reflects maybe on on some other films i mean were you thinking about other films when you were when you were making it? No, we just think about our, our, our childhood. Yeah. That's really about our childhood. And uh, it was a time. I mean, if you grew up in New York City, you played Ringo Livio, Hot Peas and Butter. Uh, give me some more. Ringo, uh, Skelly. Skelly. Strat baseball, Stratomatic. And the, and the Rock'em Sock'em Robot. Rock'em Sock'em Robot. But that was, I mean, <laughs> street yes, games. Yeah. I mean, there were no electronics one here, so you had to have, we made up games, we played games to, to keep ourselves busy, mm -hmm. especially in the summertime. I mean, no one was doing this. Right. It wasn't around. <laughs> Double Dutch. Stoop Ball. Stickball, Johnny on the Pony. The <laughs> kids were imaginative. You played games. And we really, I mean, if you look at open credit sequence, it's, yeah. that's what you see. All these, these games are lost forever. But for decades, decades, this is what young New York City kids played. And these games are gone. What, what would you most like to see people what would you most like people to take away from this movie now? This this movie is has I uh, I yeah I Tony I I never do that okay <laughs> I have so much respect for the audience that people come see my films I don't tell you what to think you know you got a brain and everybody comes to my films different experiences so they take from it you know. What they will. I will tell you. Can you raise raise your hands for people who have not seen this film? Damn. Yeah, right. <laughs> there is. Um, you might call a spoiler alert, but I don't want you going up to the projection booth. <laughs> when Troy goes down south, we use we put on anamorphic lenses. Because I wanted to convey that she's in a different world. Growing up on the streets of Brooklyn, then going down south, grass, <laughs> trees, insects, she's in a different world. So don't bum rush the projection booth. <laughs> when this film came out, people went crazy. They had to put up signs <laughs> in the theater saying that at some point, you remember, at some point, it will look strange. <laughs> so that's, that's why I'll say that. Well, because when you're from New York, the rest of the world does look strange when you, when you leave the city. Especially when you go down south. <laughs> and there's a, a thing about African Americans where if you grew up in a big city, but your parents from the south, when summertime came, they got rid of your ass <laughs> and sent you down south to spend the summer with your grandparents. So for, for us, on my mother's side, our grandparents were in Atlanta. On my father's side, uh, our grandparents were in Snow Hill, Alabama. Snow Hill, Alabama. And also, when you went down south for the summer, your grandparents made you go to church on Sundays. <laughs> and church is all day. 
no air conditioning. To my Atlanta hot, snow hill hot, I mean hot. And the brothers under me, my late brother, Chris, Christopher, one time we went down south for the summer and we had afros. And afros had not gotten down south yet. <laughs> so the minute our grandparents picked, you took the train. What's the train called? No, nah, that was the making. Silver Comet, Silver Media. Took the train from a Penn Station to Atlanta. And even though there was segregation, the last car was B29. That's where they put all the black folks on, the last car. My grandparents picked up the airport, we dumped our bags, I mean, at the train station, and dragged us straight to the barbershop. <laughs> and there was a line, people were looking. That barbershop was packed because they had they'd never seen Afros before. And we were like Martians, aliens. And the barber was cruel. My, my grandfather told the barber to give us, shave everything off. But the barber was a Nazi, a black Nazi. <laughs> and so before he shaved the heads off, we had a mohawk. <laughs> like this. It was brutal. <laughs> Another thing I think I... I uh... I should I should bring up about this movie, which which may be a, a spoiler alert, alert also, um, is that the uh, the Knicks actually win the NBA championship, um, and <laughs> I was at I was there <laughs> May eighth, nineteen seventy, the world's most famous arena. It's now known as the Willis Reed game. Well, Willis Reed came out of the locker room after getting a, a shot. The needle was this big, I got the picture. It was a horse needle. He limped out on the court. All the team was out there. The loudest noise I ever heard in my life. The Lakers, both teams doing a layup line, a layup line. The Lakers stopped their layup line. Will Chamberlain, Jerry West, Elton Bay, through the greatest plays ever, stopped and turned around and saw Willis <laughs> dragging his leg out and hit the first two shots of the game, bringing the New York Knicks their first NBA championship, one or two. The last one is 72 73 season. Yes. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the game. So, it's my hope that Crooklyn being selected by the people of New York... Uh-oh, um, come on with it. <laughs> ...will maybe help that, that unfortunate hometown team turn things around. <laughs> I'm not superstitious, but I just feel like... This the is the best Joe's review ever is. gotten from him, right? Here. <laughs> <laughs> and if it does happen, we'll know why. And everyone in New York who voted um, for Crooklyn will have a part of that. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for voting, for everybody coming out, the mayor's office. This is something I didn't even know about. Came out of the blue. And now we're going to go to rush to Fort Green, my neighborhood, where we're having outdoor screening. And the scene is shot in Fort Green, too. So thank you, everyone. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Spike. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>